Would you mind just starting to say spell first and last name and give me your title as well, please? Here, no problem. It's Grant Majors, G-R-A-N-T, M-A-G-E-R-S. Uh, I am the CEO of American Rounds and we're based out of Dallas. Perfect. Um, so what, take me a little bit through kind of the origination of, of your guys' company. How did these, uh, how did you guys come up with the idea for the, for the ammo vending machines and all that stuff? Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. So my partner and I were, you know, we were looking at this technology uh, in a kind of a different venture at the time, a different business sector. And um, we were had some strategic partners in the grocery store space. Um, they, the stores, they actually approached us. They like, they like, hey, we like where you're going, like what your, you know, your ideas are. But you know, our customers really would like to be able to purchase ammunition. And, you know, how do you, how do you, feel about, you know, do these machines work for that? And how would you feel about going that direction with us? And um, we, yeah, we, we looked at it, we did our due diligence and, and we said, absolutely, let's do it. So really, you know, this grocery store was initiated. Yeah. Really? So then you guys have six, if I'm, if I'm seeing this correctly, six outside of Texas and then one, the first one now in Texas in Canyon Lake, is that correct? Yeah. So, no, so we have, um, one in Alabama currently. We have four in Oklahoma, uh, one in Canyon Lake. Um, we're adding one um, next week in um, Colorado. And um, then we are adding another one at the other Lowe's Canyon Lake location as well, uh, approximately the following week. Gotcha. So this sometime this month or early next month, there will be another one at the other Lowe's location. In, uh, so that'll, give us, that'll give us eight by the, by the end of the month. Perfect. Um, so can you kind of walk me through, I was talking to some residents yesterday and some are happy, some are weirded out by it. Um, walk us through a little bit of how it works. I took a video of kind of walking through a little bit of the features and stuff, but can you kind of explain to me how it works, what the protections are that you have on it to make sure that underage people might not be able to use it? Yeah, would it be okay if I give some context? So- Absolutely, um, absolutely. Yeah, so, con you know, a lot of people, when they, they hear what we're doing, they're thinking about it in their minds. They have this idea of this old fashioned vending machine where a candy bar is dropping down to the, you know, the bottom and you're reaching in and taking it and going. And they, they have this idea that you're going to go up and stick a 20 into a machine. And it's going to just give you, you know, ammunition, which, you know, it seems absurd, which I would agree that would be absurd. Um, but we have to look at it in the context of what we're doing. We have to look at the context of how ammunition is sold today. And that's really what kind of drove us to getting into the business. So ammunition is sold today either off the shelf in retail locations or online. Okay, that both of those situations, they sits there on the shelf like in a re big box retail store, you no know, different than a box of cereal in your grocery store. It's easily accessible. I've gone into stores and found open boxes of 223 ammunition, which would be easy for someone just to dump in a bag and walk away with. There's a high rate of theft. There's also a low rate of identification checking at big box retails. You, know, you can go right up to the front cashier and go out with your ammo. And really, I can tell you personally, in all my life, I've never been carded for purchasing ammo. And you know, when you look at when you look at those factors, and then you consider online, a lot of ammunition purchases going online. So how easy is it for a miner to walk up to a website and click, yes, I am 21, or yes, I am 18? And then have ammunition shipped to the house with their parents' credit card. So when you start taking the context of how ammunition is sold and what we're trying to do, we really believe we have the safest and most secure method of selling ammunition in the country. And we're really trying to better our communities that way, while still maintaining the integrity of the Second Amendment and law-abiding responsible gun ownership. And so how our machines work. Is that there? You know, it's about forty-two inch touchscreen. You, know, you can go up to it like a tablet. You can just scroll up and down, select the product you want. Um, it goes to a cart, and when you're going to go to check your cart out, it's going to ask you to insert your driver's license. You're going to insert your driver's license. It's going to scan that ID, and it's doing a couple of things. It's first making sure it is a legal ID. It's not expired. It's not a fake ID. It's going to make sure you're of legal age. In our case, 21, you have to be 21 to use our machines, even though in some states, legal age is 18 to buy ammo, we require 21 in our machines to err on the side of safety. Then it's gonna do a facial recognition scan of the person and it's gonna pair them to the ID. 
Okay. And so whether it's looking for at the face versus the picture on the ID, it's a it's an active facial recognition. So you can't just hold a picture up in front of it or something like that. And it's and it's going to pair to that picture. And if you're the it's going to identify that you are the person that has that ID and that you're purchasing. So once that ID validation is completed, the trans and it's all good, then the transaction can be completed. If the ID fails, there's no transaction. So you know. Our, our ammo is tucked away. It's not out on a shelf. It's not even the people can't just walk in. They're inside stores. Um, they're not outside like some people have you know, thought, like a red box. Um, they have security cameras on them. Um, we, so we reduce theft. We ID every purchase of ammo that comes through, which is required by law that doesn't generally happen. So we are the app, the only only company that does it every single transaction. We're the safest and most secure way to purchase ammo. Um, and one thing that people think is okay. Now I had to just correct. In fact, on on eight twenty a.m. today, um, one of their talk show hosts was misrepresenting, and I think it was just an assumption on his part. I don't think it was in uh, done in malice, but he he was saying that we store the data. Um, we absolutely do not. We do not store. On a server, on the cloud, we do not sell, we do not share our customers, driver's license, identification, or facial recognition picture. We know that none of that is ever stored with our with our company. We respect our customers' privacy uh, and their Second Amendment rights to purchase ammo. Uh, if it's cool with you, I'd like to go through a couple of the concerns that I heard yesterday, just to, so you can address those. Um, the main one was, I guess not tip it not particularly having to do with the machine itself but it was the placement of it if the one in canyon lake it was um it the store that it's at is literally right next to a middle school um yeah. so some parents had an issue with the location that that store having this machine and the availability of it the uh, vis visibility of it because their kids go there every day after school what would you say to that you know, I, you know, listen, we certainly are sensitive and respect that there are various opinions in our country when it comes to, you know, um, the Second Amendment, uh, firearms, uh, ammunition, and, and I'm sensitive to, you know, everybody's concerns. And we like to talk to everybody. Um, you know, you know, we have you know, our grocery stores are there. What I, what I try to remind people is that, and generally, in most cases, there's a Walmart nearby. And in over 2,000 of Walmart stores, they sell ammunition. And I think people forget that, you know, Walmart's a grocery store, but they sell ammunition. The difference is, is that Walmart has a, quote, sporting goods section. So people don't really make that connection that it's also a grocery store right there. And so these grocery stores, they've been wanting to offer, you know, ammunition um, to their customers as a category, you know, to, as, you know as, to be competitive in the marketplace. And that's what you know, some of their customers have requested. I also, don't, I also think that when you look at people that have malintent, they're wanting to do harm. They most likely don't want to go to the to purchase their ammo at a place that A requires credit card. B is under surveillance. C is going to take your ID. Three is going to have, you know, people looking at you buying it in the store. You know, C is going to do a facial recognition. You know, most of those people with malintent, uh, you, you know, they go to their pawn shops, they pay cash, they order online, um, you know, things of that nature. So, you know, we try to take every precaution safety and with you know i understand those those fears and, and i'm sensitive to them um you know my two boys are grown now but i could understand i just you know we were going to continue to provide the safest possible method of selling ammunition while maintaining the integrity of the second amendment this is probably more of a question for the owner of lowe's but at the at that particular location as soon as you come in the door it's like right there and as i'm sure you're you're aware um of where it is but it when they when they um asked you did they, did you approach lowe's or did do grocery stores approach you or how does how does that work when it comes to placing these products in stores the grocery stores approached us about bringing on bring, you know bringing on the uh the product to the store um you know typically we we want you know like them placed you know, near the registers up front where, where there's traffic and they're viewed you know not not in the back corner of the store um, where there's less traffic. Um, that's for security sake and for, you know, uh, you know, market market positioning, I suppose, and wanting to be closer to the traffic. 
but it also helps with security when there's there's more eyes around than who's buying purchasing ammo. So you know we you know we that's that's kind of how it came out. But in this case with Lowe's, you know they they approached us, um, and uh, yeah, absolutely, you know we're willing to work with them. They've been great to work with, by the way. They are you know fantastic organization. Their staff is fantastic. They communicate well. They they're you know enthusiastic. Um, and we've gotten the majority of the feedback we've gotten is all positive. I'm not going to say that we don't get some concerns or negative feedback. Of course, people have different opinions, but I would I would say that 98% of the feedback we're getting is enthusiastic, and and we're you know we're very grateful for the support. Feel blessed by the support. Yeah, and I don't want to make it seem like the reaction down there that I got was all negative because while we were in the store yesterday, people were just walking up and taking pictures of it and thought it was awesome. Um, is that kind of the sentiment you've you've gathered from people? Is that one you hear like ammo vending machine and you're like, all right, give me a candy bar and, and a you know a round of twenty two, but you don't, but you don't you don't think like this high tech thing is that kind of the reaction you've been getting from customers is like, oh, this is a kind of novelty awesome item. Yeah, you know, it's kind of how when this thing took off, um, you know, we've been in the stores, you know, some of these stores now for months. Um, and you know it's you know it kind of finally caught wave and you know we've had all this uh, attention and immediately the you know the, the instant reaction was oh my gosh ammo vending machines you know this is this is crazy um like we don't like to call them vending machines we call them automated retail machines you know automated ammunition retail machines um arm for as an acronym i think i think that what we want is you know people to understand is that you know when you again, you got to go back to the context of how ammunition is sold, right? Um, which is safer, sitting on the shelf where it's easily theft, where they may not check ID, someone online where anybody can purchase it and just say they are who they are and you don't really know, or is it safer environment to where you go, your ID is always checked, you can't it's you can't get to it to steal it and walk out. Yeah, you know, which which is you know which is which is the safer approach, and I think I think everybody in agreement wants a safer environment. You know, we, I think we all agree for the most part. You know that we support the Second Amendment and the, and the, the you know the laws of the land that you know, that's the United that makes the United States you know us. But I think we also all agree that there's responsibility to you know be as safe as we can, be as secure as we can, um, you know, uh, be responsible. And and that is you know what what we want to do with with you know our machines and our technology and what we'll continue to do, you know as as you know technology advances and as we we can um, improve our offering. You've mentioned a couple of times the retail aspect of it and how the, easily things can be uh, stolen from stores. One other thing that I heard from people who are detractors of your machines um, are that one of the lines of defense i guess um is the person selling the ammo to a person um they're the ones that check the id they're the ones that you know can, well, can let's, see yeah, kind of so, wrongdoing i guess what what was what would be your your comment to that well i i, I can tell you so there was an investigative report done not long ago you could probably look it up and find it um uh, a, a news a news outlet sent in some investigative reporting to five different big box retailers. Four out of five sold to minors. So eighty percent of those stores sold to minors. So th they can talk. They experts can say, "Oh, it's better to have a you know a person there checking the idea." The truth and the reality of it is, it rarely happens. Right? You can go right now up the street into one of the big box retailers. There's one not far from me. I can go get it off the shelf, walk to the front, cash out. They never asked me for my ID. So, I mean, it's, it is it is just simply a fact that, um, you know, it's while it's supposed to be a law, while it's supposed to be required, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And the truth is there was a big box retailer up in the Northeast. Again, you can look this up. I won't mention their name. They had 500,000 rounds of ammunition stolen. There was recently a store in Greenville. Texas that had a bunch of ammunition stolen. I mean, so the when we when we have to look at the reality of what it is. We're the only the only company that always checks the ID. 
Uh, and last last couple of things for you. So since you guys have started this and, and started implementing these machines, how has business been? How, what has the clientele been saying? And, and how have you seen the reaction from, from a lot of people? It's been phenomenal. I mean, just like you were saying, Canyon Lake, I mean, people take pictures with the machine, they're posting on the internet, we get nothing but positive feedback. Um, you know what, some machines in Oklahoma that the, one of the store managers was telling us that the law enforcement officers are the ones that buy the most from our machines. I mean, we've had great, great feedback. Um, you know, sales, sales have increased 800% since the word got out. So, you know, we're, I mean, people are interact engaging the machine. It's very user friendly. It doesn't take long to do it. Once you're comfortable with the machine, you understand the process. Um, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's simple for, uh, for folks and, um, we've just, we're just getting tremendous feedback. Is there a limit to how much you can buy at one time? Well, you know, there's there's a limit at some level and compared to most retail stores because uh, the machines will only hold so much <laughs> per SKU, right? So someone's not going to be able to walk up and buy 50 boxes of nine millimeter, you know. Um, they're going to be able to buy 5,000 rounds of nine millimeter at one of our machines or something like that. Um, you know, so we don't put a limit on, you know, the box because there's just not that, you know, there's, there's only so many per SKU. Um, so, you know, so we don't necessarily put a limit on that. Um, I can tell you that I think the most anybody's ever purchased at one time was about three boxes, roughly. Um, so, you know, we, that's, you know, not a lot compared to other people that are buying 10,000 rounds online and, and, and various things. So we're, you know, um, it's been, it's been a, so far, this has been a, you know, it's been a real success. What have, uh, you said that a lot of your clientele is, is, uh, law enforcement, what other. I don't know if you guys have this research or whatever, but uh, what other kind of people, is it hunters? Is it um, law enforcement? Like who are you kind of aiming towards? What is your general audience? Yeah, you know, in general, a lot of it's hunting. I mean, a lot of it's hunting because we are in those rural communities. Um, so hunters, you know, sports shooters, people that like to, you know, shoot clays or go to the range. Um, you know, we sell a lot of target rounds, uh, um, you know, Certainly, we have some you know self defense rounds in there. We do sell some, um, not as, not as much self defense rounds as we do more of the sport rounds and things of that nature. Um, so you know, really, our clientele is that you know we kind of look at it. We kind of class you know maybe three major classifications when you think about those who you know are, who are you know enjoy firearms um, or you know and that's generally hunting, um, sport shooting, you know, and or home defense, you know, that, that nature. And those are generally our customers. You know, surprisingly for us, some of the most enthusiastic customers we have are, are women that, you know, that 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 are shooters or that they use it for self protection. And we've had a wonderful feedback uh, uh, from from women across all across the you know the states that we're in. Um, you know, and and we're you know, again, and, you know, the customers themselves have been super supportive, and you know, we're thankful for them. Great. I think that's all the questions I have for you. Anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, you know, only thing you know, only thing I'd like to just kind of close with is just you know, to, just to reiterate, you know, it's it really is about you know a safe response to firearm uh, usage, and we hope that we're contributing to that to better the community. Um, that's our goal. Um, you know, I think you know we're going to create some other offerings to the machines that aren't ammo necessarily ammo related, um, things like NRA memberships or USCCA memberships or. Um, hunting and fishing licenses potentially. These are things that were work are in the works that we want to bring to the machines. So we're um, you know we're trying to continually develop and, and bring our customers more offerings, and we will we will always continually put put safe air on the side of safety for our customers.